thank the lord for his goodness i will thank him for bringing us to this final session of this retreat i will thank the lord for what he has spoken to us and what he has revealed to us since we began the retreat we thank him for the corrections he has made i will thank him for the challenges he has given we thank him for the word that came in the power of the spirit from all the ministers the lord sent to us i will thank the lord for those who have recovered all the experiences that were lost for those who are saved for those who are restored and for those who have gone deeper and higher in the lord we thank the lord we pray that what god has done in our hearts in our lives in our families in the church and all over this nation and continent and beyond we pray the lord will keep it permanent in jesus name as we come to this final session we're looking at the message pressing on towards the heavenly home pressing on towards the heavenly home i'm reading from philippians chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 13 philippians chapter 3 verse 13 brethren i count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before i press toward the mark of the price of the high calling of god in christ jesus here we find paul the apostle since he heard the words of the lord from christ himself that word came from heaven and he knew there is a place called heaven and the lord called his name saul saul why persecuted thou me that voice came from above he looked up and he said lord who art thou who are you and he said i am jesus whom you persecute from that point on he knew there is a place called heaven the place where christ has gone and the place from which christ was calling him beyond that he knew another thing he said 14 years ago i knew a man what i the flesh i do not know or in the spirit i do not know but i know that man he was taken to the third heaven and he heard things he couldn't repeat and he saw things he couldn't reveal he said of that man will i glory he's talking about heaven in fact he mentioned it's in paradise and he said because of that i know there is heaven and since that time his heart had been panting he had been yearning he wanted to be there he tells us in philippians chapter 1 reading from verse 21 for me to live is christ and to die is gain he knew that there is heaven and he knew that if he died he'll be going to heaven then he said in verse 22 about if i live in the flesh this is the fruit of my labor yet what i shall choose i know not i what not for i am in a stretch between two weeks between two things he said having a desire to depart and to be with christ which is far better reveals to us that if he died immediately he will be with christ what does that mean his spirit his soul the inner man will be with christ immediately you see when a believer dies his soul his spirit goes to the lord immediately he goes to heaven immediately but the body is here on earth on the day of resurrection is the spirit and the soul in already in heaven that will join with the body here on earth and be resurrected and be glorified but he knew there is heaven 
and because of that he was pressing on he said this one thing i do i have a desire to depart i want to be with the lord he tells us in philippians chapter 3 philippians chapter 3 he had no doubt at all because he knew the reality of heaven he knew the uh, wish the, the, the wonders of heaven and he said i want to be there philippians chapter 3 it tells us in verse 20 philippians chapter 3 verse 24 our conversation is in heaven from ways also we look for the savior the lord jesus christ who shall change a vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself well in your heart there should be no doubt there's a place called heaven you remember when stevie was going to die he looked up to heaven and he saw jesus christ and he said i see jesus is standing at the right hand of the father and while they stood him he said lord receive my spirit his spirit went to heaven immediately the body was here for the believers to bury that's why paul the apostle now says in philippians chapter 3 reading from verse 14 i press toward the mark of the price for the price of the high calling of god in christ jesus pressing on towards the heavenly home we're looking at hebrews chapter 12 hebrews chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 1 those who are pressing on those who realize there is a heaven to gain there is a hell to shun there is a glory to gain there is a suffering to avoid there is a wonder to obtain and there is a hellfire to escape and there is the beauty everlasting the joy everlasting the reward everlasting there is something eternal and everlasting to obtain and there is something everlasting to you the fire the suffering the agony and the pressure and the regret everlasting to avoid those who know that they are pressing on and they are pressing on in such a way that all encumbrances and all hindrances and all evil things that will tie them down they shed it off hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 1 wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses what does that mean a cloud of witnesses that lived here on earth but now they are in heaven that knew that there's a better country there's a more glorious country there's a heavenly country that the almighty god himself has prepared for his own and they're longing for and they're pressing towards and they want that country by all means and the bible says if they had had any desire to have gone back to where they came from they could have had the chance but now they testify and declare there is a better country whose foundation is made by god himself that's why these people now they become like a cloud of witnesses for us and it says wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses the witnesses of those who endured here on earth and they pressed on until they got there like abraham like abel like enoch like noah and like sarah and like ruth and like moses and like all those israelites were told about in hebrews chapter 11 those clouds of witnesses that they pressed on until they got there he says now it's come to your turn now this is your chance because you have seen this cloud of witnesses let us lay aside you cannot press on until you lay aside all the things that will hinder you let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so doth easily beset us habitual sin besetting sin 
the one you'll be falling into over and over before you came to this retreat the one that brings sorrow in your heart the one that you always get back to the temptation came you couldn't overcome it says lay that aside and press on and have something glorious and something wonderful in front of you it says the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him always have that before you the heavenly goal the heavenly dream the heavenly desire the heavenly possession have that before you. the joy that is set before you that's what jesus did and he set his face like a flinch he knew he was going somewhere do you know you are going somewhere and do you know that the lord expects you you will press on looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of god for consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself sinners will try to discourage you they will try to distract you they will try to depress you they will try to send you back they'll try to make you shift your focus and shift your mind and shift your aspiration and shift your desires and shift your dream and shift your goal the sinners will try they will try to contradict what is uppermost in your heart they will try to dissuade you and they will try to make a substitute they'll try to show you something something different from what you're looking for it says at such a time remember you are pressing on towards something your heavenly home it says consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin he said you might have to even lay down your life fighting against sin contending against evil contending against backsliding it might have to be at the price of your blood he said you are not there yet keep on striving and keep on contending and keep on pressing on until you get to that heavenly home will be there in jesus name are you there i say we'll be there in jesus name pressing on every day pressing on every moment pressing on during the retreat pressing on after the retreat pressing on in your place of work pressing on anywhere you find yourself pressing on towards the heavenly home and you're making progress every day and you're getting nearer and nearer every day this is not the time to let down this is not the time to slow down this is not the time to look back because we're almost there if there's anything you ought to do today is to press on your body may not want to you talk to your body press on your surrounding and people around you if you're so tied to them they may be slowing down and they may be slowing you down cuts the cut between you and such people press on and it may be that even your own nature you may not be the pressing type you may be the sluggish type you take things easy uh -uh. there's not the time if a house is burning and you need to run out you cannot say i'm not a runner i'm not an athlete I, I, I never i'm never in a hurry that's the time to get up the world is going to burn and it says if there is any time at all for you to sum up your courage and for you to say everything within you you bring to the fore and you are to press on 
this is the time pressing on towards the heavenly home there are three things we're going to consider number one single-minded pursuit of the heavenly home single-minded pursuit no other thing you are thinking about no other thing you are planning for and there is no other alternative you don't have any other alternative you say that heavenly home i must be there you have a single-minded pursuit of the heavenly home number two sinful passion driving men towards a horrible hell sinful passion sensual passion careless passion evil passion driving people towards a horrible hell number three steadfast perseverance with heart holiness steadfast perseverance with heart holiness that's what it's going to take you have to persevere because your are coming you have to persevere there's those sides i see you have to persevere different thoughts are coming you have to persevere steadfast perseverance with a heart of holiness Holy, holiness of heart number one single-minded pursuit of the heavenly home there's a heavenly home and we need to pursue whatever happens around us whatever people think about it whatever people do for us or do against us pursue we're looking at acts chapter 7 verse 25 acts chapter 7 and i'm reading here from verse 55 but he talking about stevie being full of the holy ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven looked up steadfastly into heaven he saw heaven before he died he saw the glory before he died there was an assurance within him there's a place called heaven the heavenly home before he died i was told he looked up steadfastly into heaven and he saw the glory of god he saw the glory he saw the beauty he saw the wonder he saw all that the heart would desire he saw that before he died there are many people that have not seen that they have not seen it in scripture they have not seen it in vision they have not seen it in dream they have not seen it in imagination they have not seen it in their thoughts they have not seen it in their lives that's why they are careless that when you see that glory when you see that beauty when you see that heaven when you read the scriptures and you believe there's a place called heaven you will want to press on and we're told you saw the glory of god and jesus standing on the right hand of god and he said behold he said behold i see they didn't see but he said behold i see they didn't think about that but he said behold i see i see the heavens opened and the son of man standing on the right hand of god and then in verse 59 and the stone stephen calling upon god and saying lord jesus receive my spirit he had a single-minded pursuit he said i've seen heaven i've seen the glory i've seen my jesus is standing at the right hand of the father wanting to welcome you and he became steadfast and all the stones they threw at him all that did not matter anymore when you see the glory and when you see that heavenly home all the things they do all the things they say whatever they add whatever it is will not matter to you anymore there will be a single minded pursuit of that heavenly home that you see look at luke chapter 9 and see the attitude of jesus and see the attitude you ought to have well you know there's a new jerusalem there is a heavenly jerusalem there is a glorious city whose foundation is made by god himself well you know there is an eternal everlasting glorious heavenly home for you to get to your mind will be there your heart will be there everything within you will be driving towards that point in luke chapter 9 reading from verse 51 
and it came to pass when the time was come that he should go shall this should be received up he steadfastly said his face to go to jerusalem it wasn't Jerusalem that was a final destination. It was heaven. I'm going back to the Father. He told his own disciples, I said, I'm going back to the Father. And you appear sorrowful. You should have been happy. You should have been happy. He was thinking about the glory he had with the Father from all eternity. He was thinking about the worship of all, all those angels and the sight of all those angels before, well, before he came to the world. He was thinking of the beauty, the beauty of heaven, the peace in heaven. He was thinking about the joy in heaven. He was thinking about how all those myriads of angels were welcoming and he steadfastly said his face to be received up going through jerusalem that's how you set your face that's how you set your mind that's how you set your focus that's how you set your life that's how you pursue with single-mindedness knowing there's a place called heaven and you want to be there look at hebrews chapter 12 hebrews chapter 12 and i'm reading from verse 22 there's a place called heaven innumerable angels are there and great joy is there hebrews chapter 12 reading from verse 22 in verse 22 but here I come unto mount zion and unto the city of the living god stop right there On, unto the city of the living god think about that the eternal god the city where he lives that's called heaven unto the city of the living god and there's no evil there there's no sin there there's no sickness there there's no suffering there there's no night there everything is light everything is glory and glorious everything is wonder and wonderful everything is joy and joyful everything is peace and peaceful he says it's the city of the living god and that's where we're going and when you think about that and you compare this world with heaven and you compare this country with the heavenly country and you compare all the things you could have here you compare that with the glorious land your mind will leave this place and your mind will not be here all you want to do is what can i do to add to my joy when i get there what can i do to add to my reward when i get there what can i do to add to my appreciation of god when i get there it says it is a heavenly heavenly city where God himself is living the heavenly Jerusalem and to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn which are reaching in heaven you want to make sure that your name is there you want to make sure that there's a record for you and a record concerning you in heaven you want to make sure that your name is already gone before you so that now you are coming and as you get to the gate they check the register of heaven they say his name is there her name is there and then the angels will welcome you your mind should be thinking of that that should be your pursuit single-mindedly saying that's where i'm going that's where i want to be i pray you'll be there in jesus name and that's why it says in colossians chapter 3 single-minded pursuit single-minded pursuit after or through or towards this heavenly home in Colossians chapter 3 Colossians chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 1 if ye then be risen with Christ if you are born again if ye then be risen with Christ something happened before you are risen with Christ crucified with Christ I am crucified with Christ not only that you are dead with Christ not only that you are buried with Christ and now you are risen with Christ one crucified with Christ I'm crucified with Christ nevertheless I live the, and yet not I but the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the face of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me you cannot be risen with Christ until the self nature is crucified until that inbred nature is crucified but now you're crucified with christ and then you have died with him the world 
is not important so much to you and all the things in the world they're not of interest to you you are dead to them you are dead to their smoking you are dead to their drunkenness you are dead to all the festivities they do not attract you as those six do not attract a dead man crucified with him dead with him and then you are buried with him you've gone through that water of baptism you are immersed in the water it's a barrier that it demonstrates there you are buried with him and now you rise in newness of nature you rise in newness of life and it says if ye then be risen with christ seek those things which are above seek those things which are above instead of concentrating your life on seeking the mundane things of this life instead of concentrate concentrating your life on seeking the things that will vanish away and the things that will so perish and the things that will be burnt in fire eventually seek those things which are above where christ seated on the right hand of god set your affections on things above like you said your wristwatch set your affections on things above like you said a compass to face just one direction set your affections on things above set your mind redirect your mind turn your mind let it point at heavenly things let it point at things that will last forever you set your affections on things above check up in your life is there somebody you set your affection on you love him so much that it will be so painful for you to divide or to separate yourself from him and yet it's the one that is leading you in the direction of perdition and suffering and hell get your mind away from that and reset your mind and set your mind on things above is that a woman that has so arrested your heart arrested your soul captured your life and you set your affection on that woman and if that woman once that woman begins to cry then you cannot take your stand anymore and says you are leaving me if you leave me i will die if you leave me if we don't continue this relationship then that means my life is over i will write a note and i will say so and so is the one that caused my death i will commit suicide and because of that you are attached to sin attached to fornication attached to adultery you get your mind away from that woman don't let her take you to hell it says you will set your mind on things above and you will then that's what the lord wants us to do instead of you know you're a jellyfish you don't have a strong mind you don't know where you are going you don't know the condition that she's going to get you to heaven and you do not know what those people are doing it makes you so attached to them associated with them you don't have a free mind and you cannot say this is where i am going but you come today and you say enough is enough i am going to get to heaven somebody there is going to get to heaven i said somebody there is going to get to heaven you're going to take your heart from them you're going to take your affection from them you're going to take your destiny from them you're going to take your interest from them you know if i if i don't see him in a day it's like i'm done and they say what do i have on earth if i don't see her what do i have on earth if i don't see him that's the danger that's the trap that's the trap and you take your mind away from those things that are so essential to you indispensable to you and say now i set my affection on things above and not on things on the earth for you are dead and your life is seed with christ in god when christ who is our life shall appear then shall ye also appear with him in glory that's what the lord is calling us to that's what the lord is telling us and he's saying you must do something steadfastly you set your affection steadfastly you're looking towards that goal and towards the place you're going that's how to get there and because you know there is something beyond the grave there's something beyond this world philippians chapter 3 philippians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 7 it says but 
what six were given to me those six i counted loss for christ that's a single-minded man that's a person pursuing something he said i count them number one i couldn't deal without that before number two i couldn't live without that before i, I will feel empty i will feel life is over i will feel there's nothing to live for that if i didn't have that thing they were gained to me they were profitable for me they were essential for me they were almost indispensable to my existence it may be a small thing it may be a big thing something that has held your heart captured your heart captured your life and everything every time you think you're saying i thank god i have that i thank god i have that if i didn't have that how would i live if i didn't have that how would i ever be joyful all the apostles said that thing was making me look downwards that thing was making me look at sand and cement that thing was making attaching me to the things on this earth they were profitable and they were gained to me he said because now i see the glory because now i see that heaven because i see where i am going very clearly i jettisoned them i threw them away he said but the things what things were gained to me those i counted lost for christ you know sometimes it's an illiterate girlfriend so called sometimes it's a brute of a man that doesn't even have any fine needs at all that captures your interest sometimes it's a stranger a stranger you are meeting for the first time and that person is giving you showing you things that glitter but they are not gold sometimes it's a position it's not even in your hand yet and they are promising you that political position and then they say but before you have this you must go through some rituals before you have this you must go through some occultism before you have this you must change your religion and that position becomes so great to you you've not even got it yet it's not in your hand yet and the sin is going to take you from heaven and paul the apostle said but what things were gain unto me those i counted laws for christ yea doubtless and i count all things i count all things things of the past things of the present things of the future i've made up my mind already when they come i say no they're done they're dross they're useless they're worthless i know what i want i know where i'm going i know what i'm going to get it says doubtless i count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord for whom i have suffered the loss of all things he said but no regrets no remorse no going back he said i'm not regretting that the position i had with the sanhedrin voluntarily i gave it up the position i had in the religion of my forefathers voluntarily i gave it up the position i had with traditionalists Paul the apostle said no big deal i've given it up have you given anything up are they so important to you that they are tying you down are they so important to you you cannot make up your mind you cannot pursue heaven all these things that will perish your time they're so important to you paul the apostle said not me not me i count them as lost for christ i've suffered the loss of all things and don't count them but don't that i may win christ that's a pursuit single-minded pursuit towards that heavenly home you know sometimes you don't know how your life is going to be whether you have long time or short time but at this your age now if you were to have something already and some of us have been born again now for 20 years for 30 years for 40 years for 50 years and when you were first born again you threw away all those things and your people knew the villagers knew your townspeople knew that man that woman only for heaven at this age after 20 years of being in christ the things that you have dropped 
the six that held no hold upon your life and the six that even though the people in the country is important politics or any other sin the six rejected sin are rejected before at this age now you're picking it up again is that not backsliding are you not going back to your vomit are you not going back to the thing you said no to many years ago but paul the apostle said when i say goodbye to anything anybody that brings that thing back i tell him don't you know who i am my constitution my conviction my consecration my devotedness to the lord i said bye bye 20 years ago 20 years have come and gone i still say that same thing bye bye because i have counted them as dung and dross and refuse and i'm not going to go back to them again that's the mind god wants you to have so that that heavenly home you will get there i said that heavenly home you will get there but if your life is all surrounded by this you don't even know where to put your feet you don't know how to move around because this one is there this one is there that one is there whatever message you are hearing it will not do anything at all in the positive you might cry you might shout get rid of these six come out of this place and get out of those things that will tie you down and be able to say like paul the apostle i have counted them as dog and as dogs you might have to change your friends you might have to change your associates you might have to lock up yourself and say no i am not going to give in to that out of a woman she was about to get married and this woman knew that the man she was to get married to was not the proper person a criminal but she had so much attachment to this man that she, every time she will say i cannot marry this man i cannot marry this man i will not marry this man and anytime even after she has said that the man will show up again and once the man shows up and she sees uh, him like this all the decisions they are taking everything will be evaporated and then she will not know what to say the man was so captivating for her and eventually they went on and searched the day for the wedding and the day for the wedding was coming like this and she was saying i cannot marry this man i shouldn't marry this man if i get hooked up with this man my life is lost and wasted forever and then a day to the wedding everybody was expecting where it was going to take place she ran to the police station she said do me a favor lock me up in the prison until i tell you to release me they said why he said i need to get away from something that will destroy my life i don't have the boldness i don't have the courage i don't have the ability to get away from that man lock me up and they locked her up in the prison and on the wedding day she was in the prison voluntarily after the wedding day she was in the prison voluntarily until the man gave up and then she came out of the prison and she was free that's that woman was not necessarily a christian she just knew i shouldn't marry this man can you lock up yourself like that all those friends are coming and then you are taking decisions during this retreat and they will come again and introduce this and introduce that and you do not have the power the courage and you do not have the strength to overcome can you lock up yourself in your room and can you lock up yourself in your own house can you put up that phone and can you just make sure that they are not able to get to you that's what paul the apostle would have done because he had his steadfast mind and he set his affections on things on night and he said everything i got in this retreat i will not lose it i know how i lost what i got in the past i just be will come and say this and say that this time i will not lose what i've got i'm talking to somebody 
I said, I will not lose what I've got. I said, I will not lose what I've got. You're not losing it in Jesus' name. It's going to take steadfast, steadfast pursuit or single-minded pursuit after the heavenly home. Number two, sinful passion driving men, driving people towards a horrible hell. There is a hell. Jesus spoke about hell more than any other preacher in the Bible, Old Testament or New Testament. He spoke about hell for Matthew. He began to tell the people, Matthew chapter 8. In Matthew chapter 8, I'm reading here from verse 11. Matthew chapter 8, we're reading from verse 11. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and from the west. I shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom, the Jews, the children of the kingdom, the church goers, the children of the kingdom, the nominal Christians, the children of the kingdom, the religious people who are not righteous, the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of tears that's uh, jesus speaking about hell there's a hell to shun there's a hell to avoid there's a hell to escape and look at chapter 45 matthew chapter 45 chapter 25 verse 41 matthew chapter 25 i'm reading from verse 41 then shall you say unto them on the left hand depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels depart from me ye cursed into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels the same eternal hell prepared for the devil is where sinners will go and think of the suffering it will be unbearable if a place that is supposed to make satan to make the devil feel the pangs and the punishment and the pain and the horror and the terror if the place is for satan and is to make satan feel the suffering and any human being is also there with that satan and with the demons think of the pain those who get there will feel look at verse 46 and these shall go into everlasting punishment hell is a place of everlasting punishment mark chapter 9 in mark chapter 9 we're reading from verse 43 and if thy hand offend thee cut it off does those who are steadfastly minded to get to heaven and they say at all costs whatever happens that hell i will not get there that means those are the people that not there's a burning hell there's an eternal hell there's an everlasting hell there's a place of everlasting punishment and they're making up their minds and they're saying i will not get there i will not get there and therefore whatever they will have to do so that they will not get to that hell they said i'm ready to do it anybody as important to me as my right hand if it's going to cost me to get to hell i cut him off anybody as dear as precious to you as your right eye if it's going to make you to get to hell you say i'm not going to get to hell for you i'm not going to get to hell loving you and being attached having affection for you i will cut you off that's what the lord is saying look at that verse 43 and if thy hand offend thee cut it off it is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell into the fire ah there's fire in hell did somebody say there's no fire in hell that's a mistake that's not right that's wrong there is fire in hell jesus said into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched when the one dies not and the fire is not quenched and if thy foot offend thee means of transportation means of movement you know it's, it's like your leg 
so important to you as your leg without him you cannot get to where you need to go maybe he supplies the money for the transportation maybe he gives the car for the transportation but when you are in the car together you know what he does you're a lady while you're sitting there together in the front you know the all the caressing and all the things and you're saying in your mind this is not right this is not right but i can't resist him because the one is my feet is the one that gives me motion is the one that gives me transportation if i tell him now that i don't like this i don't want this i want to go to heaven he will frown at it and he'll say are you calling me a sinner i need to do something about these all these things that you know will influence your life little little drops of water make a mighty ocean you fall here you fall there you fall there are you going to rise are you going to take your stand and make sure that you are a pilgrim you are a candidate for heaven that's why it says if thy foot offend thee cut it off it is better for thee to enter into life than uh, with one hand or with one foot than having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire hell is a place of burning it's a place of fire it's a place of suffering that's what jesus said fire that never shall be quenched where their one dies not and the fire is not quenched and if than i what can i do without that i what can i do is the person that makes me to see is the person he sees a lot of things for me he gives me information and the things i wouldn't certainly he is the one that makes me to see that's your eye and it stands for you anywhere and it goes for you anywhere and makes you see what you will not see if that eye somebody as precious to you as your eye as important for you as your eye as needful to you as your eye if thy eye offend thee block it out it's not talking of your natural eye it's talking about that person that person so close to you so precious to you i cannot live i cannot go anywhere without him she is the one he is the one that sees everything i don't see if thine eye offend thee block it out it is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of god with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire into hell fire you see what the lord is saying he said it's a place of everlasting punishment and because of that you want to avoid it by all means you want to shake it off by all means there are sinful passions that lead people there and you want to make sure that by the grace of god all those sinful passions all those sinful activities you are not involved but them i'm reading from revelation chapter 14 revelation chapter 14 i'm reading from verse 10 revelation chapter 14 and we're reading from verse 10 revelation 14 verse 10 the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of god which is a which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and ye shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lord and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast or and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name a revelation chapter 20 from verse 11 and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was no place found for them and i saw the dead small and great i saw the dead small and great i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were opened and another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works 
and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered the, up the dead which were in them hold on hold on what does this mean when somebody dies like the story of the rich man he died when he died immediately his spirit his soul went to hell fire but the body was still here on earth and the body was buried we're told the rich man died also and was buried and then he found himself his spirit and his soul in hell and he lifted up his eyes and he saw abraham afar off and he said father abraham send lazarus to me to bring to just cool my tongue with a drop of water because i am tormented where in this flame there's fire there that's when the spirit and the soul goes immediately a sinner dies immediately a backslider dies immediately a false prophet dies a false teacher that's why they go immediately the spirit the soul they go there to hell but the body is still here and is buried and then on the day of resurrection the power of god will raise that body and the soul and the spirit that have been in hell since that man died will join to the body and then spirit soul and body the complete man will now go to the lake of fire hell has fire there's burning there's suffering there's agony there's darkness in hell fire and it's the spirit and the soul that is there now on this day great white throne judgment the spirit and the soul and the body will now join together and it says death and hell were cast into the lake of fire what that means is that death and hell cast in lake of fire nobody will be dying anymore because all those who go to that lake of fire they'll be there forever and ever and ever suffering eternal suffering everlasting suffering it's a place of suffering they cannot come out of that place and that's what it says in verse 15 and whosoever whosoever a church man whosoever a church woman whosoever a backslider whosoever a sinner whosoever an idol worshiper whosoever was not found reaching in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire that's why the lord is saying that you do everything possible if you have not repented to turn away from sin and to say a final forever bye bye to sin and whatever is happening you set your mind you set your heart on that heavenly home and you say this hell i will not be there listen to me there are people that play with their souls you steal now and you know that the seeds will get to hell and then after stealing what if you had an accident and died without a chance of repentance there are people when they're sick because i am sick there's nobody to pray for me my people are saying they will carry me somewhere and they carry you to the idol shrine and then while you are there in the idol shrine you die there you will go to hell why don't you endure even if you're sick even if you're suffering even if you are not healed the suffering of sickness cannot be compared with the suffering of hellfire that sickness even if you are not healed you'll be you will die and when you die you're free from that sickness but if you are carried to the idol shrine if you are carried to a place of occultism where they say they are praying and they're throwing this and splashing this on you and you die there no matter who buries you you will go to hell it's hellfire that's the reason why you say whatever happens whatever i go through whatever the suffering whatever they need maybe you are barren and because you are barren they say come here they say come there and they take you somewhere to give you something to eat mark your body rub this on you what's that that's i don't worship what's that that's occultism what's that you're serving the devil right there because you're looking for children if you die there or if you die on your way back and you don't have a chance to repent you will go to hell that's why you're saying whatever price it will take and whatever i need to give up whatever in whatever condition i need to remain i'm going to remain because that heaven i will not miss it i said that heaven i will not miss it somebody there that heaven i will not miss it 
you will not miss it in Jesus name we're looking at point number three steadfast perseverance with heart holiness steadfast perseverance with the holiness of heart we're looking at Psalm 24 Psalm 24 I'm reading from verses 3 and 4 Psalm 24 we're looking at verses 3 and 4 the word of God tells us who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place he that has clean hands and a pure heart he that has clean hands somebody stealing church money you don't have clean hands money is nothing the church does not become poor because you stole church money but you are the one that will go to hell he that has clean hands the one that is touching other people's daughter immorality I didn't go into what, was, what I'm talking about I didn't do the real thing what are you talking about I only put my hand there put my hand there you will perish he that has clean hands your hands are not clean those who commit abortion your hands are not clean you shed innocent blood I don't want another child this one came by mistake we already have five six seven children and this one came by mistake I'm going to kill this one you have right to take life you have you have right to destroy that baby you don't have clean hands if you don't repent you